Hi everyone. Today I'm going to discuss the derivation of the double integration method. Though there are four basic deflection methods, namely the double integration method, method which will give the acronym DIM, the uh, area moment methods or the area moment theorems, which we will give the acronym AMM, and third, we have the slope deflection or the conjugate beam method, which we give the acronym CDM. And lastly, we have the energy method, which has two sub methods, namely the virtual work method and the Castigliano's second theorem. So our main concern in, in this video is the derivation of the double integration method. So let's consider a beam that is loaded with an arbitrary loading to generalize the derivation of the double integration equation. So with this loading, it will deflect and the elastic curve will be this one. And this is highly exaggerated because the actual beam, you cannot see it that it will bend that way. So it will appear with our naked eyes as straight. But this is for the purpose of uh, derivation. So let's consider two points in the elastic curve, C and D. And furthermore, we consider a very small element of this elastic curve, which is circled here. And we magnify that into this form so that this is the uh, portion of the elastic curve which is very small and this is the beam so we have here the radius of curvature they meet at that point there so again this is highly exaggerated or distorted figure but in fact this uh, differential s here is almost straight in reality so the radius of curvature is denoted by r and the central angle denoted by because this is very small differential theta the arc length therefore is equal to the differential s and actually this differential s is almost equal to differential x because as i said the curve the elastic curve is almost a straight line so this is just for the sake of uh, magnification so that you can imagine so from so this straight line distance is actually almost equal to dx as i said so since from geometry the arc length is equal to the product of the radius of curvature and the central angle d theta and i hope you know that from s equals r theta from geometry or from trigonometry then because the deflected shape is highly distorted, that actually ds is equal to dx practically, and the slope theta is very, very close to zero. So that ds is equal to dx, and dx is equal to, from this equation, rd theta. So then we draw a line parallel to this radius here, so that the angle formed between this, these two lines is the same as the theta. So this arc length therefore is equal to ds and this is the uh, deflection or this is the change in length of ds. So if we denote the radius of curvature here from the central axis as y and because the angle is d theta also d theta so imagine that y is the radius so this has deflected part or this elongation of ds is y d theta just like uh, arc length is radius times central angle so this is radius y times d theta from strength of materials we learned that Normal stress or sigma is equal to my over i from flexure definition, and this is equal to 
proportional to strain. And the constant of proportionality is the modulus of elasticity. So stress is proportional to strain or stress is equal to modulus of elasticity times strain. Then this strain here is equal to this deformation yd theta divided by the original length which is ds. So sigma which is equal to my over i is also equal to strain which is yd theta divided by ds. So because ds is practically equal to dx because the fact that this elastic curve is really almost a straight line so m over ei from this equation here is equal to d theta dx and from here m over ei we cancel out y is equal to d theta ds and ds is replaced by dx because they are practically equal and therefore it is equal to 1 over r because from here d theta ds replace ds by dx is 1 over r. So it is the reciprocal, m over ei is the reciprocal of the radius of curvature. So from here, we have tangent of theta equals dy dx. The slope of the tangent to the elastic curve is from calculus, derivative of y with respect to x. And because the angle is very small, tangent of theta is practically equal to theta itself in converted to regions. So you may try there uh, one degree. One degree is a considerable angle that cannot be considered a small angle. You may try 0.5. That's considered small, 0.5 of a degree. So you press tangent of 0.5, then convert 0.5 degrees to regions by multiplying 0.5 by pi over 180. You will see there that tangent of 0.5 degree in decimal will be practically equal to uh, 0.5 degree times pi over 180 to convert it to regions. So that's it because as mentioned a while ago, the elastic curve is actually almost a straight line, almost horizontal that the slope of the horizontal line is practically almost zero also. So theta, which is dy dx, is equal to y prime, the other expression for dy dx. So remember that for very small angles, such as the slopes in beams and frames, tangent theta is practically equal to theta itself when converted to regions. So d theta dx from this expression here is equal to the derivative of theta. And theta is equal to dy dx because the angle is very small. Then that's that becomes derivative of theta with respect to x is the second derivative of y with respect to x. Since d theta dx is m over ei from this equation here, then m, e, m over ei is equal to the second derivative of y with respect to x, or simply ei, second derivative of y with respect to x, or ei y double prime equals moment. And I hope you already familiar with this differential equation of this elastic curve. So this is the differential equation of the elastic curve. So it is a second degree differential equation. So, sorry, second order differential equation. So this is the differential equation of the elastic curve of the beam. So I think you're familiar with this. Ei y double prime is simply equal to the moment at any point on the section of the beam. So integrating once, so we have Ei dy dx equals ei y prime equals integral of m dx. So after we integrate this expression or we break this into dy dx, then this is m dx and integrate. So ei dy dx, which is ei y prime equals the integral from x1 to x sub 2 
So any point, it may be that is from C to D, X sub 1 would be distance from A to C, then X sub 2 would be A, A to D. Then integrating further, so by the way, this, is, this represents the slope of the tangent to the curve. Integrate it. EIY dy dx is equal to EIY prime or integral from x1 to x2 of m dx plus c sub 1. Now, c sub 1 is interpreted as the slope of the tangent at the origin. So, it may be point A as the origin. Then, if the left support is a pin or a ruler, then there will be slope at that origin. If point A is fixed, then the slope of the tangent to the fixed support is horizontal, so it is zero, so therefore that will only be zero. So integrating further, so that's the slope of the tangent to any point to the elastic curve. Integrating further, so we have EI y prime equals EI delta, or the deflection, we have double integral of m dx plus c sub 1 dx. So that's it. So this represents the the equation of the elastic curve. Uh, this one is the equation, differential equation of the elastic curve, and this is the solution. So we have here the equation of the elastic curve. So therefore, y represents the deflection from the horizontal x-axis. So if it is negative, then it is below. If it is positive, then it is above the x-axis. That's the meaning of that. Then, from before, so this is the equation of the elastic curve, and by integrating that equation before, then we have the double integral of m dx dx plus c sub 1 x plus c sub 2. c sub 1 is the slope at the origin, as I said, then c sub 2 is the deflection at the origin. So if the origin is a support, then c sub 2 will be 0. But there is value of Z sub 1. When the support is fixed, then there will be no C sub 2 because there, there is no deflection at the fixed support. And there is also no initial slope at the fixed support. So this is the equation of the elastic curve. So in the above equation, C sub 1 is the slope of the tangent at the origin, while C sub 2 is the deflection at the origin. So if the origin is a perfectly fixed end supports, then both C sub 1 and C sub 2 will be 0. If the origin is a support, maybe ruler or pin, then C sub 2 will be the only 0 term, regardless of whether the, that origin supports or settles. So that's the theory. And don't forget to subscribe in my YouTube channel so that you will be updated with my lecture videos, especially in the subject uh, theory of structures. Thank you for watching.